is it was his fault hello hi i'm ash and i'm fatima and this is Ash. we've been gone for like a year kind of when was the last no. time we did a show shut up when was the last <laughs> time we did a show like Wait. what october well, no it wasn't october we did a show in november Early and December. We we did it. It happened. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. I don't remember. Okay. All right. So Somebody like will remember. It won't I'm... be me. It is a new <laughs> Okay. Yes. So You're... I have questions. Uh do I look okay? Because uh -huh. I have a new oh, computer. Here we go. We can't start a new show in a new year without you oh, it was it was computer. a different it was a different it was different than like do i look pretty it was uh do i look okay with this new computer and i'm using the um camera on the computer do i need to go back to the old camera yeah or like is this okay no you look good thank you you look good you. you look crisp and detailed mm -hmm. yeah, yeah and look like look, the good. green screen is working it's not like patchy no no no, no, no. Yeah, it looks good. It looks good coming into the new year with a new setup. Ain't that nice? Yeah. Um, but I better not like like but I'm like real careful, like let's wait until like Mike goes to, to use the bathroom or goes away to like buy food or like do whatever it is that he typically does. Because I don't want him to know that I got a new MacBook Air. Because he's a MacBook killer. Mm. He'd be killing him. You do and I don't want him to kill mine. He's, he's not listening. There. He's not listening. He don't pay attention. He got the ADHD and his ADHD. I mean, Damn. he did okay. take the headphones off and he's like on the phone or something. So. Yeah. So like, yeah, he's, he's not, he's not going to know. So mm. he's not well, going like to he touch your computer. I know. I know. I won't let men touch it with their sticky fingers. Yeah. I have my, um, my baby brother has been here for like a week so that's <laughs> oh no he did did you see him in the chat did you see him <laughs> hold on i just saw the alert come up what do you say oh don't let him don't let him near you i think that's fine. what's for the best mm. for the best um yeah uh my brother <laughs> Shut up. He's just acting like a horror movie. Like, talking about, uh, I'm going to kill it. I don't have to be close by. Oh, no. He's going to destroy it with his Mac computers. He's going to, like, carry. He's going to set it on fire with his mind. <laughs> Sounds like a hater. Yeah, yeah. He hates, he hates MacBooks. <laughs> and he buys them with the purpose of destroying them. Mm. Obviously. That's, that's a lot of money to be petty. Do, do you put it past Mike to be petty? <laughs> Mike's no. gonna be petty no matter how much it costs. Nah, I think he'd be petty on a budget. $1,300 to be petty? Absolutely not. Uh, more if you get one with that you can actually like do anything on. Because mm -hmm. the base model for these are like, you have this M2 processor, but they want to put it with like eight gigabytes of RAM. And it's like, what? what am I supposed to do with that? Because even yeah. to download just one of the programs that I need in order to do like data science, that there goes four gigabytes right there. Yeah, my, the Mac I have now and have had for over like seven years at this point came with only eight, but it was the last, it was the last of its generation where you could upgrade the RAM. Oh yeah. So, now it's all like non upgradable. What you get yeah, is what you get. Yeah. Oh, you didn't buy enough? Guess you need a new computer. Yeah. Exactly. So I had to buy a Mac well before I really wanted to because I didn't even have like a desk for it, but I had a job that required me to use a Mac. So I was like, well, I guess I'm going to just have to use this Mac on the floor and I'll just upgrade my RAM when I get the money to. I didn't upgrade the RAM for another like five years and was still doing like, Oh, wow video editing on it just because you gotta make it you gotta make it do what it do and honestly you can you can do some decent video editing with eight gigs of ram 
you just got to keep all the media separate from the computer and i think that's where people get mixed uh, messed up they'll have their media in the same space as the um the program they're editing from and that's going to slow the shit that's going to slow your computer down so much so eight Mm. gigs of ram to run premiere pro fine because i had all the media on like a two terabyte external hard drive so i was able to do what i needed to but like yeah now that everything is like soldered in you can't really upgrade unless you buy a new computer my office has been sitting on upgrading to the new macbook airs because of that Hmm. well maybe not because of that but like they they're they're not the type of company that's like oh the new hottest and greatest thing is out let's buy it and upgrade all our like, shit they're like no yeah no. yeah we gotta run it through its paces for the stuff that we need to do so it'll be like they'll they'll talk about it as soon as it comes out but we might not actually upgrade to some new tech for another like three years because when Just your needs are different. like very narrow and specific and you're not out yeah. here like oh i don't know what i need then um yeah. then why would you pay for features that you don't when, when you have a dedicated use. department for technology they're mm-hmm. not going to let you just do any old kind of thing i'm not even allowed to download programs on my desktop like i'm i'm at min locked out of a lot of things if i need to do anything if i need like a new like uh what, what do they call them like templates or something for like after mm-hmm. effects or photoshop i have to go through the administration and be like hey can y'all uh just like Skype into my machine and put in the password because I just needed this one little thing. But yeah, they they not letting y'all do any old kind of thing. Wait, hold on, my food belt burn. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh. Um, I want you to know that like a little bit after you left, your lips were moving. Oh. Alright, I'm back. I have not eaten today. As I'm prone to do. I've just been asleep. I had well, coffee and candy. Lord. <laughs> and I've been up, so. No, I've literally just been in bed. Not always sleep, but not moving either, so. I think it's depression. I don't know. I haven't had oh. anything to do. Depression, depression shows up in different ways for people. And for me, mm-hmm. it's just a lack of energy and just being in bed all day. But it's also like, okay, so I struggle with this. Like, is it depression or is it winter? Like, it's oh, dark no, outside. Is it? <laughs> it's cold. I don't have anything else I need to do. It's dark. The thing. It's dark. Like, it's the sun is rising all late and it goes down all early like like i feel like if i had something i needed to do i would be doing it but i remember like, previous reasons previous winters where like yes i had things that i need to do and i did them but it was a struggle the whole time i did not feel like doing any of it no like i for me I need to feel useful. I need to feel like I'm doing something creatively speaking because I've been in like a creative rut for like a long, long time to the point where it's like I'm not even self-motivated like I used to be to just make something. I had a whole week last week where I had no work whatsoever. I didn't have any freelance work. I didn't have any new projects in the office. This could have been the perfect time to just work on something for me, and I couldn't. I couldn't be asked to do it. I, okay. Well, how about you take a step back and work on working, work on wanting to do something for you, which is bringing me back to a book that I recommended to you like six hmm. months ago. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I forget what it was called. At this point, remember. just bite the twenty dollar bullet and get it. <laughs> so I want you to get it buy immediately. It for me. Buy huh? it for me and buy it for me and just send it to me but on top of that i haven't even finished a good stack of the books that i bought last year like 
Okay, I, well, those are not gonna help you get back your mojo. This one, they're not. But it's like they're they're supposed to be things that I like. I should. Yeah, be but you don't eat. like the things that you typically like when it's winter. Like this outside is the and time in your to soul. Like it. But you <laughs> obviously it's not. If you're waking up oh, at oh. oh legs, we haven't seen those oh. legs in no. forever. I know. When you're waking up at 6 p.m., obviously it's not the time. God damn it! With my le- show us those legs. No, <laughs> no legs. <laughs> I can't look, I don't even remember where my buttons are. Anyway, um Yeah. I I need to do something. I couldn't even get in contact with like my therapist that I saw a couple years back. Oh, that's that's ugly. Yeah, I was because my um my company had like a way of like I forget what they call it, but it's like for 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 people, for employees, like employee help something or other. Mm. And I reached out to them. They're like, oh, "Okay, well, we've got we've got some therapists that you we, you can use us in the network, or if you have a therapist, because they're now connected through BetterHelp. Mm-hmm. Like, if you have a therapist, you can um give her give them this information, and we'll make sure that she's connected to our network. Like, I don't think they would have to convert to whatever my office's outsource was." It was just so that they were on record of being like, hey, we are going to comp this particular patient two sessions with you. Mm. Like, you're not going to get paid by them. You're going to get paid by us kind of thing. But Mm. they wouldn't have to be on their payroll kind of thing because she went, like, independent. And I, like, sent her the information and told her, like, you got to you got to interface with them. Like I'm, I'm right. just the person to say like, hey, I like you to be my therapist through these means. Here's the documentation so that can happen. Right. And then then hear from either person for like weeks. So I check in with with the outsource and I'm like, so what what happened with the therapist I tried to get access with? And they're like, yeah, we haven't heard from her. That is so frustrating. Oh, this is why people yeah, don't go back to therapy. Yeah, it, this is yeah, why people it, go back to therapy. It's an obstacle, yeah. Yeah. It's fucking annoying. Because it's like, first of all, finding a therapist that you vibe with is already hard. Yes. And then you find them, and then it's like, oh, now I can't afford them. Or they're no longer in your network. <sighs> mm. And then, like, the whole runaround just makes you be like, you know what, fuck it. I already do not have the energy for most things. Mm-hmm. And now I have to have the energy to try to chase after someone to give me the help I need. because That's a huge like issue. Five. That's a huge issue for mental health um, to know what you need in terms of the type of help, the help that you need. And then have to like go through all of these hoops with like, is my provider in network? is like and that's another reason why we need like universal health because uh people who need care and they need it right away whether it's mental health or something physical they should have access to it easily so annoying even with like my even just my regular health care my yeah. doctor oh, yeah. is now out of network because my company is with a different provider and we have like three different providers we have a provider for health care and dental and then we have a different provider for um, eye care. Uh, what? Why is eye care, dental care, and just regular like physical care? Why are these all separate? I don't. Cause fucking these America, are... bro. Everybody just trying to make money. You're a human. You you have a human body. <laughs> like I want to. All these that... things are going to need care. That should have been all under one umbrella, but no. So I'm like sitting here trying to figure out like why isn't my oh and then like the the, the health provider websites updates so and then like the password I thought was working is not working. So then I got call people and I'm like all right that yeah. fixes that. I'm trying to get my eyes examined because I haven't had that done in like seven years. And they're like oh right. like, you don't have provider through us. And I got to go go through my old emails of onboarding with my company to try to find like who the fuck provides eye care right oh again like three different it's 
crazy. Three different things for three Why is there like a full-time job just trying to take care of yourself? That's why I don't. <laughs> That's you know, I know. I and, and you know what? I went through several periods in time when I did not properly take care of myself. And it's like working and trying to take care of yourself. And it becomes too much. It really <laughs> is. And then uh, you end up having to do it anyway when you end up in an emergency such a situation where like, oh, well, now I guess you have to. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you, and you're, I know you're actively trying to avoid that. And, right. But it's also right why, like, I went through grad school and I went through a really long period of just, like, not having a physical. And yeah. then once I did it, I felt better. But, yeah, but, yeah, catching <laughs> catching up on all of those, like, healthcare stuff, it, it, it took a time. It took a while. And I had to do it during a period where I was not working, which is not what I recommend you doing. But... <laughs> I mean, I have to. But then again, Breaking it again, down. I, gotta find a, I have to find a doctor that I even like. Because, like, the one yeah. that I was going to, she wasn't necessarily like, oh my God, wherever you go, I'm following you type. But it was mm. like, yeah. just the, the convenience of like where she was for, for appointments. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, she's no longer going to be at that office. And then on top of that, she's no longer in the network. Oh god. Like the way they be swapping your doctors out, like that happened to my friend once. She was she had been seeing like this little old Nigerian black lady for years. She mm -hmm. goes in for her her uh not even her angle. She she goes fairly regularly. She goes in to think she gonna see this little old black lady and it's some big white German dude. Oh and this is one of those like checkups where you gotta like strip down in front of a person. It's like oh. Uh... No. no no email to tell me hey so and so is retiring or is moving to a different office nothing i at least mm. got that with my chick but i had already like set up my appointment and i didn't get the email till after my appointment was set up right and just like hey do you still want to maintain your appointment it's gonna be such a such chick I'm like <laughs> fine whatever and it was like they, they switched me to like a white chick the the chick i had before she was like some kind of brown yeah <laughs> like she wasn't black but she was like a brown woman <sighs> so yeah so now i gotta figure out another black doctor female preferably within the yeah. city limits that i can get to where it's like if i go I can go like during my work day kind of thing, like go during my lunch break, still come back. Mm. Like, at this point, fuck it. You know, if I go, I go. I don't, I don't fucking care anymore. I've never been able to figure, to fit in any kind of appointment within a lunch break because everything takes more than an hour. Okay, well not a lunch break, but like where I could be like, hey, I'll be in after lunch because I have a morning appointment kind of thing. Right, right. So like the morning appointment's at nine, so I don't come back to the office till like 11 noon. Yeah. And I have to do like, do that like a month in advance type thing. Oh. Just so I just so I can let the office know if, I, if I'm if i on a project they're gonna put me on, I gotta tell them like, hey, this particular day, three weeks from now, I won't be available for that morning. So someone's mm -hmm. gonna have to cover me kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't fucking care anymore. I, I, I don't. I don't have the energy to care because I might be depressed, but I can't get diagnosed because I can't find a fucking therapist. <laughs> Just a snake eating his own goddamn tail. Yeah. That's terrible. It really is. Hugs, hugs, hugs to the screen. I've, hugs I've, can't I've help been me. there. I've, I've been there. Well, I'm giving you hugs anyway. And at some point, Hugs will, will be able to help you, and you can still have those hugs. So, there. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I have to I have to let people help me in the ways that they feel like they can best help, even if I don't think it's going to help. I know. It's hard to do that, too, because I'm like, that's not going to help me! <laughs> but it, it helps the people that are trying to help me feel better, I guess. I just get to the point where I'm just I, I'm just gonna be quiet because I'll have my opinions about things and I'm like my opinion does not matter right now so 
I kind of, I kind of resort to to Prince Zuko, and I'm like, that's rough, buddy. <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm action oriented. I can't, like, if we gonna complain, we gonna complain. But like within the complaining, try to come up, come up with like a solution, because that helps me feel better if I could think of a plan of how to make things better. But when it's something that I can't really plan my way out of, it just makes me feel worse. Like my therapist. Oh. I'm a, actually I'm a I'm a type up an email. Can you check can you stuff. okay? So like, do you have access to better help like right now? No, I was hearing some things about better help that I wasn't too fond of, just in terms of like, oh. like how these therapists were getting paid and stuff. Mm. I was like, this doesn't. Mm, I don't know how I feel about that. Okay, so, so it, maybe it doesn't jive with your moral compass. So. Yeah, and like yeah. I said, the, the therapist that I had through BetterHelp, she ended, she was just doing it for like a year with BetterHelp or something. And yeah. then, cause it was during like the pandemic. So it was like, now that things have lifted, now she's going more independent as she was before. Oh, but yeah, I'm gonna I'm a reach out to my provider and just see like, yeah, I don't know what's going on with the therapist I was trying to reach out to. Can y'all just, I don't know, find me a black woman. <laughs> find me a black <laughs> A black therapist I could talk to because this might start affecting my work. Right, right. Um, I know for every time like I went to a therapist, I went to God, I think it's psychology today that has like ads for therapists mm -hmm. and they'll tell you like what they specialize in. And I always mm -hmm. look for someone who specialized in who like had like some kind of like diversity statement like in their stuff, like they yeah. would say like they had experience with people of color or African Americans or something, right? And, and especially and that... there in the issues that they cover too. Like I'm not necessarily going to go to a therapist that's good with couples therapy. I need someone, right, right. That like maybe has like a, a sexual therapy in their background and like uh, I don't even know what other categories. Well, Family, I know like maybe. different types of therapy. Like I. Like, I know, like, cognitive behavioral therapy has, like, lots of backlash against it now. But that's mm. something that's always worked for me. That and, like, mm. behavioral activation. Like, because I have a lot of emotions. And if we could just ignore those emotions and focus on behaviors, <laughs> then that gives me something to focus on. And that will change my, like, thoughts and emotions yeah. kind of naturally for me. And I know it doesn't work like that for everybody, but that is what works for me and that's what's like great about those types of like online like profiles where they can tell you like what they specialize in and therefore you can get somebody that that works the way that you want them to work and i avoid psychoanalysis because it just doesn't and, and i'm not saying that psychoanalysis doesn't work for people but it it just doesn't seem like something that's up my alley it's too once again talky talky in in my head without telling me like what are the steps that i need to take in order to not feel the way that i'm feeling or not to experience the outcomes that i've been experiencing i just realized i have to get paired with another therapist and then i gotta start over i know i'm sorry oh, i'm sorry God. i'm sorry like nine months of rapport in in history that I can't get the TLDR rip. Oh my god. Sorry. I don't, to, I don't want to do this. Sorry, I'm sorry, sorry. This is why I just don't talk to people. I just keep it to myself. I just keep it to my mind. Yeah, yeah, but yourself but yourself is sick of you. Like that's all I mean. <laughs> it is. I'm so sick of myself. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so done. I'm like, you know what? We just gonna go to sleep. Cause then I ain't gotta hear me complain about nothing. Just just shut up and go to go to sleep. You can't complain when you sleep. <laughs> ah, yeah. Well, in less depressing topics, uh, were you able to finish any of your readings? Your, your okay, so off, yes, I books? did. I did finish Song of Solomon and all oh, that ending. That ending, like, okay, so like, like most Toni Morrison books, it started off on um, something disturbing, like uh, that that book is all the way 
like with the shits in in terms of like the very very first like page or so is a man uh trying to fly off of a building he committed suicide um <laughs> And I did see a couple of Toni Morrison um, interviews where she was talking about this book, but she didn't give any spoilers. And she was, and they asked her like what that book was about. And she said that it was about black people who could fly. And I was like, what? And it did not, that her saying that like did not make sense. And the beginning of it did not, in the beginning of that guy committing suicide, like jumping off a building did not make sense until like the very end but it was all worth it at the end the way that she like tied it all together it made the title make sense it made the beginning make sense it made her saying that it was black about black people who could fly make sense mm. and it was great it was great but also when i saw that clip of that man uh leaping across the room to get at that judge I thought about oh black people hit the flat. <laughs> oh my god. That <laughs> that was that, disturbing. It was disturbing and and that I know I should I, I shouldn't make fun, but uh no, I was thinking about like that everyone book. everyone is making fun of that scene and I'm just like bruh. What's you most can. horrifying? What's most horrifying is that you can see, like, you can see him leap across, and you can see her, like, go Trying down. Trying to get away. But you couldn't see, like, what was happening up underneath there. So, like, it's just left to the imagination. And, and I, I was like relieved to see her get back up because, like, he, he put a gash in one of the the people's heads, one of the oh, guards' heads. Yeah, really? like when you when you Ooh. see it, the aftermath, you see a, a like a bald light-skinned white man possibly walking by the camera and he's like holding a napkin to his forehead oh, but it's like bruh you're doing nothing for your case you know you you pleaded why you shouldn't go how to jail. much how 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 much was he being sentenced to was this an instance of like he was getting to, sentenced to a year and now he's gonna get 25 I, like what from what i heard it was it was possible that he was just going to get probation so wow. like, he was saying in that moment like he was saying um you know i don't think i should go to jail because i've been making progress in my life and she was like well looking at your track record you might need to change some things like she didn't straight up say like i'm sending your ass to jail she was just saying like right. i'm not i'm not convinced and your track record is not convincing me plus you're here like and i'm i'm, I'm inferring based on why he was there that he was there for like aggravated assault with like a baseball bat or something and now so she, he's getting the world like a so she's like she's like, like you're here for this i'm looking at your track record you have a history of being violent you're saying that you're doing better in your life but yet here you are maybe you need to change something. like her words are like maybe you need a change of scenery or something like that so it could be implied that she was about to say like yeah i'm about to send you to jail but sir leaping across the table and attacking her and showing the world how violent you are that is not going to help you because now you've assaulted a government official mm. a number of government officials you you attacked a judge you attacked yeah. the officers so now you really gonna get it now you got additional charges and according to his foster mom who was in the the um the court she said that um he had been off his meds mm. whatever meds those were and he just he had a break and i'm just like as far as i'm concerned moving forward when it comes to uh court hearings if you I was going to say, like, if you are on trial for some kind of violent offense, the defendant needs to stay handcuffed to the table until the hearing is over. Period. But some people are crazy. So I would just say any defendant needs to just be handcuffed to the desk until the hearing is over. You know, have one of those long chained ones so they can still move around fairly comfortably. That's dehumanizing. 
it's for the safety of, of the judges and everyone. Either that or put the judges behind a, a cage or like one of those plexiglass oh my things God. Like, at the, like at the gas station. Something. But y'all just got these people just out in the open defenseless well, that against... typically doesn't happen typically like people do not get that far i, I don't know why it... these guards were not doing what they were supposed to he got over the desk nobody could have guessed that he could jump that far like okay but the minute he started running like y'all got y'all need to have cops stationed at the judge's bench and right next to the defendant and 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 the other and the uh prosecutor like cops everywhere ready to move not just in one position Ay. ridiculous that i'm like it's we're barely a week into 2024 and it's just been foolishness oh i'm also okay so i have so you know like after i finish reading one tony morrison book i do not start on another one because they you can't that's they're, a psychological they're <laughs> And I made the mistake of, of of doing another book that has also been triggering because um, it is the tragedy of Puddinghead Wilson. And I'm did like, did you say Puddinghead? Yeah, I did say Puddinghead. Have you not have you not heard of the tragedy of Puddinghead Wilson? No. Okay, there's a reason why some of Mark Twain's other books are. You know, you read them in high school, and you typically don't read this one. It's the N word mm -hmm. a lot. Um, oh. <laughs> but well. the tragedy of Wood Puddinghead Wilson, I are in high school. Like our English teacher did not assign us to read this book, mm. but she showed us the movie version, and the movie version kind of like sanitized some of some of the as they are want like, to do worse elements of this but um i have listened to this on audiobook which was very very disturbing because yeah, they, they it, it was in the they dropped in the n word and and in, yes in and it, like the version that i that i heard because it was on oodle and oodle does not have like oodle takes like books where like the copyright has run out but like the person reading it is like not somebody where like they were hired by a company or whatever it's volunteer actors mm -hmm. and the version that i heard was sounded like an old white man and a lot of the story re re revolves around a young mixed race woman and so you end up with this old white man dropping the n-word <laughs> and trying to do a female's voice all over the place and it's, it, it, it was a lot it was a lot so is this, a, is this a black man? It was an old white man. He sounded old and white. No. <laughs> Why you got this old white man saying the N word? Why did well, he do a that? Different, a different white man wrote it. So like, I, yeah. But that was a different time. Like during Mark Twain's time, it was like acceptable. Right. And he wrote it during during that time it, it takes i know place i know that, but that it's like I, uh -huh. i'm just saying as <laughs> as a person of this time i if i was a white person i don't he's think just I'd reading be, i don't think <laughs> i feel comfortable doing that i mean it's something it's, it's, yeah. like leonardo yeah. dicaprio said something where he said he uh like for um um, Django and Chain. Mm -hmm. He pretty much just had the method act. Like he just had to, he had to hypnotize himself to get to that role, to be someone so vile and say the things yeah. that he was saying. Like yeah. he had to go to a whole nother place. That's how. That's how much he had to distance himself from saying the things that he was saying. And you just got this man on Oodle, just reading from a book. <laughs> And he probably not getting nearly as much as, as Leonardo DiCaprio did to get paid. Oh, I think he did it for man. free. I think he did See, it for free. I think this <laughs> You gotta pay me. That that Leonardo DiCaprio said, you gotta pay me, because that's gonna ruin my reputation. Okay. Me just out here just calling people niggas. <laughs> but okay. So and and yeah, like with okay, so like reading Tony Moore said, like, there's a whole bunch of like trauma inducing like trauma stuff but you could tell that she like genuinely loves black people and um this is like 
imagine if all that love just went away. Um, <laughs> it's a lot. So, like, the premise of Putting Head Wilson is that um, is it's nature it's nature versus nurture and so i i think that it's kind of funny that i saw this in high school and then i ended up like studying those questions of nature versus nurture as a social psychologist um but like the situation that these people are in is that a you have put in head wilson so put in head is um a man who was educated on the east coast he came down to i think they're in like missouri and he was gonna open up he was gonna become a lawyer and so like but like as becoming a part of the community he made like one joke that the people around him like didn't get like it was just like he made one joke they found it off-putting and weird and they didn't get it and that's how he got the name puddin head and puddin hits that puddin hit label stuck for like the next 20 25 years mm. and he never got and he had to end up he ended up having to do like freelancing as an accountant and doing all of these other like different types of work in order to like be able to afford to live because of the fact that that one joke just like ruined his reputation as a lawyer and a lot of people thought that he was stupid um so like one of the themes is like the reputations and how like how like these ideas about like who you are, are formed by others and they kind of like stick um another thing is that Puddinhead happens to be into like a whole bunch of like little different hobbies one of his hobbies having to do with the at the time like new technology or the new science of like fingerprints and um and so like he is like going around asking people for like their fingerprints or whatever they think it's weird but he, he but he's just doing his thing he doesn't mind being different um so you have that going on with putting head that it's it's named after um and then you also have this one of the main characters like roxanne and roxanne is a slave who is only 1 16th black so she looks white but what she's not it, like her great grandma is black or something whatever it was that like 1 16th black makes her born a slave and she's recently had a baby with one of the white masters. So that baby is only one thirty second oh black. God, the fucking fractions. At the, yes, fractions. <laughs> so like that's one of the themes. Themes is like okay, so like denying people their freedom and their humanity based upon fractions. Number one. Number two, she has this baby that is only one thirty second black. At the same time that the mistress of the house has a baby who is white and nobody can tell these babies apart but her now there comes a point where like the master is missing like a dollar or so and he like assumes that one of his slaves stole it he could have just lost it or whatever but he assumes one of his slaves lost it and he's grilling them about who did it, blah, blah, blah. And um, at first, nobody wants to admit to it, possibly because none of them did it. Um, but eventually, he threatens to sell them down the river mm. if they don't uh, if they don't confess. The minute he says he's going to sell them down the down the river, they all three confess. <laughs> that they did it Because they okay. don't want to be sold down the river. Okay, but then you're not gonna have you're gonna have three less slaves then. So you just waste. It doesn't money. matter. It doesn't matter. He's just gonna buy new ones because this is these okay. are objects to have. Slaves cost more than a dollar. So you you lost one dollar, and then you gonna spend three more dollars. No, well, he's gonna sell them. He's gonna sell them and buy new ones. Take the money from the sale and buy new ones. Oh my god. Um, also, it always just always irritated me how they would parse black people as less than human not even human but you fucking them why are you fucking something that you akin to being 
demons, if not animals. Did you not Why see that? You? Did you not see that TikTok about how men will fuck anything? Uh, so like, and 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 to support her argument that men will fuck anything, uh, she talks about how mortuaries prefer to employ women instead of men because so many men have been caught fucking the corpses. Mm-hmm. You got it. <laughs> My space. What? What? Uh, uh, whole pussy. Uh. There's actually like a disease you can get from doing that. I forget what it's called. Yeah. It's 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 very specific to like a corpse body if you mess with it in a certain way. Anywho, him doing that gives Roxanne the new fear that her or her baby could be sold down the river because she was like, wow, the master's so heartless, he would sell us down the river. What I'm going to do is make sure that never happens to my baby by switching them. Oh, <gasps> listen, oh. wait, wait, <laughs> no, but listen. Where's my finger? Listen, it's funny you should say that because I actually started watching uh, the fuck is that show called? It's, it's one of those uh, Chinese dramas that mm. they made into a light novel, that they made into a manhwa, that they made into an anime. Um, okay. I want to see the Chinese drama. Heaven's Official's Blessing. Okay, okay. With uh, Xian, Xian, Xian Lie, Xian Lian? Xian Lian and, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That has nothing to do with what you just said. I have started watching Heaven's Officials Blessing, but this is not where I saw the same scenario that you had. The scenario that you had is in a Japanese anime that has like oh. Chinese feel to it. It's called The Apothecary mm. Diaries. Okay. And in the Apothecary in the Apothecary Diaries, the emperor has like five concubines or what have you. Mm-hmm. And at one point, the two of the concubines we're giving birth at the same time mm. his number one concubine this emperor was fucked up was like 12 so she's giving birth a 12 year old is giving birth and at the same time like a mid 20 year old is giving birth mm. and the mid 20 year old she was like she didn't come from like as pristine of a family as like the number one child that was giving birth at the time Mm -hmm. But she was, like, friends with the emperor's son. So she got, you know, friends with the emperor's son, but I'm in line to fuck your dad kind of thing. It was weird. Uh. But in any case, she gives birth to her son. It was a rough birth. She lost her uterus in it somehow. So she can't give birth no more. She's on the chopping block to, you know, no longer be a concubine. And, yeah, or be sent to a cold palace where yeah, she will and, never be seen again. Yeah, and her and her son is gonna have like no no rights, or you mm-hmm. know, her baby's up for death too. So she decided. I don't know how they came to this point yet because they haven't explained it in the anime. But at some point, the twelve-year-old empress and the concubine switched babies, hmm. so that the concubine's baby would have a better upbringing should anything happen to her. And the 12 year old did not like the emperor. She's 12 and she's having to fuck Mm. this old man. He had to give birth. I think he gave birth to like at least two kids. So she was really not fucking with the second kid. So she ain't, Uh she ain't, she ain't want nothing to do with her own kid. But she was cool with swapping with the other baby, even though that baby I think was the emperor's kid. It was it was the it was weird. Anyway, the point is the babies got swapped because of the fear of some if something happens to me, my baby would not be safe. So I'm gonna make sure they are in the upper echelon of this hierarchy. Man, and it just it just came to find out, and I don't know if this is gonna happen in your story, but when the babies were switched, so now the concubine has the actual prince. And her baby is being raised as the prince. Hmm. The prince under her care is being taken care of by the her milkmaid. And the milkmaid fed the real prince honey at a young age. Not knowing oh. you're not supposed to feed honey to babies. And the baby died. 
Ah! So, there's only a limited number of people who actually know that the current quote unquote prince is not the actual prince and that the real prince is dead. They just keep telling folks, oh, he's sick. That's why he doesn't make appearances. <laughs> And the concubine son who's been raised in the emperor's house, they have him working in the, the concubine garden as like an official. But if you a man working in the as an official back there, you have to be a eunuch. So everybody right. thinks this dude back here ain't got a dick. <laughs> Lo and behold, there's a rooster in the hen house. He has a dick. Mm -hmm. He's actually like actual emperor blood which even he knows him and his his like manservant dude he knows but everybody else don't know yeah. i think yeah. even the concubine and and the concubine who's actually his mother knows and the apothecary diary is about a chick um who like dabbles in poisons and stuff like that and mm -hmm. she was able to clock all of this like she is new to the palace she's only been in the palace for maybe a year and she just has certain encounters with different people and she was sitting there here like hmm i wonder if they swap babies <laughs> nah that'd be crazy <laughs> she, just, she just kept it to herself oh, but lo and behold she she clocked the whole situation but she be she be trying to stay low she is she's like i don't want no trouble mm -hmm. She be trying to make herself look ugly, which is just putting freckles on her face. She don't want no smoke. She don't like talking to this dude because he's really pretty and everybody mm -hmm. wants to get with him. So if they see her talking to him, that smoke towards her. She's like, look, man, I, I don't want him. He ain't even got a dick. I can't do nothing with him anyway. So I don't know why y'all on his non-existent dick. He ain't got nothing for you. But yeah, oh, so but you know, did you know that eunuchs in real life, like they really... Well, once again, well, not only did they wield a lot of power in the yeah. in the palace, in the, in the, but yes, also they many of them got married. They did. Yes, yeah, so I read that. So it's like I don't, and I don't know to what extent they were like eunuchs. Like, was it just they took their balls? Oh, they, no, they, they took, took their, everything. They took the yeah. pillar and the stones. Yeah, oh, damn. there's. I could send you an article. Well, I mean, you can be married it's and about, not have like, sex. It's like the knife, the something else, and the chili, the chili powder, because that's how they would like seal the wound, wound with like very painful, like, like how do you chili, pain? chili oil. There's still enough for the urethra, right? Uh, well, that's another thing. Like very often, like it was not, it, like the there were problems with the urethra because, and that's how they came up with saying such as stinky as a eunuch because like there would be like lots of urine and whatnot. Uh, and very often they they kept like a they kept their like stuff like on them because it was like one of their most prized possessions because yeah. due to their for religious reasons like if they want they wanted to be buried whole like with all their parts and if they lost it they would be like very very upset i would just keep it like literally they'd be like yo you got your balls in a dixie cup on the shelf Put my balls in a jar no, with the cork. Because... I'm not carrying that with me. It's gonna okay. smell. That's so weird. Keep it on you. <laughs> no. You can't trust other people. Somebody might steal it if it's not. We'll like... hide it. You gotta hide it. That was something else in in like in Chinese lore. Let's go back to heaven's officials blessing. You'd have ghosts that were like really really powerful, and mm. the only way to really destroy a ghost would be to destroy their the ashes. Mm -hmm. No, their, yeah, their ashes, and so they would hide their ashes or they would give them to someone they really trusted and loved. Like to have a ghost's ashes is like the highest esteem. Cause you could destroy them. Just hide your balls somewhere. I'm not carrying that with me. That's that's like chopping my boobs off and just still keeping them in a knapsack. Like I'll just take them out when y'all need to bury me. That's weird. All right, but going back to your story, the okay, babies get the, swapped. The babies get swapped, and then, like, her son becomes her master, oh. and she gave him everything. She's always, like, really good to him. She spoiled him. He was a bad child. He's oh God, it's like Moses. And also, um, 
the white child that has now become a slave is like endlessly like good but like that bad child did everything bad he like emotionally and physically abused her um he stabbed the other child <laughs> because he had power master slave power over oh him my God. um and That's then awesome. eventually um the like people that she's working for like the mass the master and the missus die and on um the master's deathbed he gives roxana her roxana or roxana whatever her name is they give her he gives her her freedom and she goes to work on a riverboat you know it's mark twain he loves a riverboat for some mm -hmm. reason <laughs> uh probably because he worked on one in real life um and then there's like a time jump and in this time jump the the her real her biological son ends up in the care of an uncle I guess there was a childless like aunt and uncle and they took care of him his behavior did nothing but get worse he went to Yale but dropped out due to gambling and um and then the other boy was moved to some like plantation that isn't that far away so he wasn't like sold down the river he's still nearby um but uh she ends up like she worked on the riverboat all this time she like dil diligently saved for her retirement and then when she quits and she goes to collect her money from the retirement there is no money left because the bank went bust due to no fault oh. of her own Oh god. Damn. So what she does next is go back to her biological son and she is like, "Do you remember your old mammy? I need some money. Mammy has fallen on some hard times." And he was like, "Get back, bitch. I ain't giving you shit." And then she was like, I mean, okay. "Why did, why did she think he would though?" <laughs> she thought maybe he grew up and he would be a more kind person and she what? was like, "It but whatever it was, she was like, "Well, that's what at least what I would try. That's at least what she was trying before she was like oh oh you don't want to give me any money well let me tell you something let me tell you something that's gonna fuck you up <laughs> that's why you a nigga yeah yeah that's exactly how it came out that's exactly what she said but i mean it's his word it's, it's her word against his so actually it's not because before she made the swap remember putting head and his love of fingerprints mm -hmm. before he before she made the swap he had taken fingerprints of both of the children. And after he made the swap, after she made the swap, he took the fingerprints again. So he has evidence that the children have been swapped and he doesn't even know that he has evidence. But I'm guessing that the evidence will come into play now that the bad one is in a whole bunch of trouble because he has committed a murder. And you have not finished the story. I ha I'm seventy five percent of the way through, but I but I'm guessing that those fingerprints are going to come into play because it's Chekhov's fingerprints. Like, <laughs> mm. and he has both. He has the before and after for both of them. Mm. Also, <laughs> also she's currently like where I am in the story. She's mad at him. She's newly mad at him. Because in order to pay off um, his gambling debts without his uncle finding out, uh, she offered to let him sell her back into slavery. Absolutely not. With the agreement that he would sell her locally. And no. what he did in order to make a quick sell is sell her down the river. Absolutely not. <laughs> what is down the river? Why is everybody so scared of being down the river? uh because slavery is a lot worse the further down the river you go so she's in mm. missouri right now which is like very like near west uh-huh and down the river is arkansas tennessee mississippi alabama oh, 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 <laughs> yeah, nah. yeah 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 nah, yeah nah. yeah yeah things get worse as you go further down the river um mm. for your life as as a slave mm. Uh, he sold her down the river because he thought, because he, well, hey, he's stupid and he's short sighted and he's mean. Um, but he thought, like, she'll be all right if I sell her just a little bit down the river because, like, 
this like planter that's what they call the slavers they, this planter seems nice the issue was is that he had a wife who was not nice and she was jealous and so she made sure like so roxanne had always been a house slave and she made sure and she wanted to get her out of the house she put her in the field and also had the overseer like beat the hell of her hell out of her so then she had to escape from slavery and she's like back in his face now like you you piece of shit you sold me down the river you need to fix this right now mm-hmm. um go get the money to buy me back and so like in trying to get the money to buy him back buy her back he ended up killing his uncle and so now he's in like a whole world of shit he's got gambling but I mean, like, why he's committed is he, a murder why is he even listening to this former house slave because she is because he's afraid of her because she can say like actually he's black he's my son and she can get him sold down the river no she can get him she sold. can get him sold. yeah she can she can expose him as a slave and uh, as someone who was born black and also born a slave and she can also in and that would given his history get him sold down the river so he's afraid of being a enslaved b being sold down the river so that and is he, why he is he willing knows, to do and he knows that she has fingerprint proof no um i don't i forget like how she made him believe that made him believe that people would believe her but he believes that people would believe her so that is why he is willing to do whatever she says also he was like also he's really um no it's like he's really racist because he's always lived his life as a white man and to find out that he is 132nd black is like really fucked with his head. Nowadays, <laughs> like, I'm a quarter Cherokee. I'm a thirty second black. <laughs> I've got Irish. Like now, they they flaunt every single different. But also, blood. like that's not new because, like, as soon as slavery was like over, like you could make more money as a prostitute if you were like one eighth black or whatever or if you are like a little bit black than if you are fully black or fully white and prostitutes knew this so that so they would flaunt themselves as being as being what they called in octoroon one eighth black even if they weren't black at all as like a marketing that's, boy that's crazy it's How? actually not crazy it's been done no i say oh, i, I oh. say crazy in the sense of like if you are, you know, one eighth black, you not human in terms of slavery is legal. Slavery is now illegal. Ooh, you an eighth black? Ooh, ooh, you got that good, good. I want that. Well, like, what? Uh, it means that you are. It means that you're as. It's like it means like oh, you're only like a little bit bad. Like you have that that black sex drive because like the hypersexualization of black women has been a thing since forever from what i've seen (laughs) from what i've read hypersexualization is usually a response to trauma so yeah a lot of black people back in the day former slaves i guess they would be considered hypersexual but also like that's also just a stereotype that is put on people no matter what they do like, you know, it's a it's a stereotype now for black people. But I'm I'm saying in terms of studies that have been done mm. of people who are hypersexual, who actually have, are, yeah, they it's like a across the board. Yeah. yeah, it's a trauma response. Black, white, Asian, anything. So back in the day, the hypersexuality being prominent amongst black folks, yeah, they were traumatized. It wasn't like an innate thing that you're born with. It was literally a response to trauma. But it's still a stereotype that continues regardless of if you suffer from trauma from back in the day. Same with the whole, if you aren't fully black or if you just have just just enough black in you to give you that spice that now you're attractive. You got any, you you, you get, you have just the right quote unquote black features. Whether it's actually there or not. (laughs) Yeah. 
whether you put an extra bronzer on or getting a BBL, you're taking these hypersexualized images of black people and then just trying to Frankenstein yourself what a baddie looks like. It's annoying. Ugh. People yeah. get on my nerves. <laughs> Humanity gets on my nerves. Yeah. Sometimes. It's not enough for me to be like, destroy it all, but it's like, ugh. If I think too much about how humanity functions, I'm gonna make myself upset. <laughs> but yeah, this this book, um, this book is a lot. But I keep coming back to this story, possibly because mm. I'm a social psychologist. Um, mm. But I had been looking for a copy of Putin Head Wilson, could never find one in like Barnes and Noble or whatever. And I finally found one for free on, I think it's like, is it Project Gutenberg or the Gutenberg Project? Either one. Mm. They have all of these like post copyright books for free. And I was able to download it onto my e-reader from like over 10 years ago onto my Kobo, which still works. So, yay. Let's I get to read it for free. Hear. Yes. Or and also I listened to it. I listened to it on Do Poodle for don't, free. Don't listen, don't listen to it anymore. <laughs> that just sounds. I won't. I won't. I won't. It was it's, horrible. It's been it's been more tolerable to read it uh, than it was to listen Hear it. to Jesus it. Christ. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. Sound can take you but out. Now I'm guessing they could. They might be doing. They might be doing e-reader ebooks with AI. I don't. I don't know how that's gonna go. Hmm. All those AI robot voices. I yeah, don't. I mean, if you tweak it well enough, then the AI voiceovers can. Sound and then you could possibly human. give like a female voice to a female character. Yeah, I already use a. There's a website called Eleven Labs that allows mm. you to make AI voiceovers. And they can sound fairly human. The thing is, you need to know how to write for human voice. Like, you need to know how to put in pauses, periods, commas, like, to get that natural flow from when people mm. are naturally talking. So it doesn't, it doesn't just sound like a run-on sentence being read by a, a robot. Mm. You really got to know how to put in commas, periods, dashes. That makes a world of difference. Yeah. Oh, man. so yeah oh and also like we don't have time for this but i want us to get back to it later i finished watching attack on titan and... uh, do you know kev on stage <laughs> yeah he, he watched it he fought he watched it too i've been watching and now he's on death note i'm, yes. I'm loving all of his anime content <laughs> i love his journey i find it hilarious he binged it in like two weeks already cosplaying <laughs> oh my gosh that's that's hilarious it's i mean and he's i was surprised to find out he is as old as mike i wasn't no. i thought he was older i thought he was like 45 well he has kids <laughs> so he's married with kids and yeah married with kids kid his those kids. kids made all of his hair go away <laughs> yeah they kids will drain the youth out of you like that's not a that's no shade that's just they will drain you but yeah it's for, so for him to be 40 and he's just now getting into like anime outside of dragon ball z it's like my guy they threw you his into the first deep video, end his first video be a like surprise that anime is not like cartoon like, yeah, he was like, there was pizza and, and vagina. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. nigga. Like, yeah. Because we're adults now. Like, and they die. They die, die. They don't die and then just pop back up. Nah, like, seriously, the, the last time he was watching anime was back when the only anime we had access to was on uh, Kids WB and Fox Kids. Mm. That was it. The actual kid anime, like Pokemon. And even Dragon Ball Z, to an extent, was more like older kids, like mm. tweens. Because I remember you could watch you could watch Dragon Ball Z two ways. You could watch it during Toonami, and then you could watch it during Toonami Midnight Run. And that's when they aired all the stuff they aired during the day uncut. So you had the cursing, you had blood. Yeah. 
Tell me you didn't watch Toonami Midnight Run without telling me you didn't, didn't watch Toonami. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know. What I year didn't. was that? What year was that? That was like, the, that was the 90s. No, I was busy. <laughs> I was a child that wasn't even supposed to have been up, but I heard cussing with cartoons. I was like, ooh. They didn't say that this morning. They didn't say that <laughs> word, but I watched it after school. Nah, they just said, yeah, go ahead and watch Blue Eye Samurai and then Attack on Titan. <laughs> I ain't watched Attack on Titan. He watched Attack on Titan now. Now he's on Death Note. Death Note, I watched back in high school. Late middle school, early high school was when I watched. Uh, my Death journey Note. has been similar to Kevin on stage. I watched a couple of seasons of Attack on Titan and then Trevor made me watch Death Note. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> Uh, that was a lot that was a lot it's, but we can talk lot. about it we can talk about it next time oh also yeah, i've yeah. seen the barbie movie oh and you like it i've i loved it because uh it talked a lot about like masculinity all of that exi- no i was there for barbie's like existential crisis because oh, i yeah. wrote my dissertation on mortality salience or like mm. the different ways that people act when they start to think about the fact that our lives are short and we're all going to die and everyone that we know is going to die so yeah i had that moment a few weeks ago oh it was it was just one of those things where i'm like the only thing the only thing i'm afraid of when it comes to death is the fact that i don't know for certain what comes after it like do i just stop existing or god forbid i have to haunt this earth after mm-hmm. death i do not want to be around once i'm gone but i also want to still have some kind of purpose like i would want to be a i want to be like a guardian angel kind of thing like i want to have a task like i want to try to make the world better in a way that i might not have been able to do during my mortal time so i want to actually be able to help folks i don't you know still be able to you know chill out and all that float on the cloud or what have you but like the idea of just existing but not having an influence like unnerved me and then just not existing also unnerved me like just blackness nah i can't be right i can't i can't just not exist right well if you didn't exist then you wouldn't be worried about it anymore true <laughs> it would just, it just <laughs> everything would just stop it would I just, just be over thinking. for just you. Over. Yeah. 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 That's, mm. But it's something my brain can't comprehend. Mm-hmm. It's like an uncanny valley of thoughts. Like, what do you mean we just aren't going to think anymore? That's all I've been doing since your conception is thinking. Well, okay. Well, what were you doing during the Civil War? What were you thinking about during the Civil War? I wasn't born. I said conception. Yeah, you weren't born. You go back to wherever the fuck that was. <laughs> girl <laughs> ah, you know you you lost me you lost me all right but we'll have to continue this existentialism oh and if you get a chance watch salt burn okay I've it's on seeing. amazon okay. okay it's one of those movies that just like it makes you uncomfortable okay like yeah. i i admire a movie that can make me uncomfortable and it, like, I understand why it was doing it. Like, it, it pushes the line just enough to be like, why did you include this? Mm-hmm. But it's like, oh, I hate how I feel, but damn, y'all executed this in a way that, like, I can't, I can't be fully mad. I'm just uncomfortable. That sounds good. That sounds good. <laughs> it's, there was, man. <laughs> that sounds was, up. Like the yeah. guy who does Hereditary and Midsummer, that's how all of those movies yeah. feel to be. Right. It just pushes the line of being gratuitous, but still within the realm of expectation for the world he is setting up. Like you are mm-hmm. you should feel unnerved and uncomfortable here. It, yeah, it does just enough to do that. I'm like, oh, I'm not watching this movie again, but it was effective. <laughs> it was effective. <laughs> it's going to live in my head rent free without me needing to ever watch it again. Yeah, actually, I have no desire to rewatch Midsummer. Right. It was like, it was or hereditary. Ex- oh, that and um, 
uh, Dead Man Crybaby or Devil Man Crybaby. I watched it oh. once, never again. It was an experience, mm. never again. I can't even recommend that to other people necessarily because of just how visceral of a ride it was. I need to know your sensitivities before I suggest that. Don't, no one better suggest that to Kev on stage. Do not <laughs> recommend <laughs> Double Man Crybaby to that man. Don't do it. It'll fuck him up. <laughs> oh, God. All right. But yeah, a discussion for another day. Yeah. I've been Ash. And I've been Fatima. This has been... Attach. Bye. Bye.